if I do a very slow shearing of the sample, what is going to happen? During shearing also the pore water pressure will be 0, why? Drain condition, all my walls are open, correct? So that means during consolidation pore water pressures are 0, during slow shearing the pore water pressures are 0. In other words, the total U is 0. Fine. That is why this is known as effective stress analysis. Now, if the pore water pressures are 0, what is going to happen? Sigma 3 will be equal to sigma 3 and sigma 1 will be equal to sigma 1. Clear? Now, things are simple. If I plot it on a more circle, so if you have tau versus sigma, what is going to happen? This is the first sample. This is the second sample, this is the third sample, sigma 3 is increasing and if I plot on this scale sigma 1, sigma prime also effective stresses and if I join this curve and if I depict it as tau equal to C plus sigma tan phi, now this is your more, more Coulomb envelope. Correct. In the effective form, what is going to happen? Because the pore water pressures are 0, the effective Mohr Coulomb envelope will superimpose on this Mohr Coulomb envelope also. That means tau will remain as same as tau prime. Normally, we do not write tau prime because this is your sigma 1 minus sigma 3. Clear? So, this will remain same as sigma 1 prime minus sigma 3 prime. So, tau prime will also be equal to C prime plus sigma prime tan of phi prime. But in reality, prime indicates effective. Effective is nothing but sigma minus u. You remember the effective stress analysis which we had done. So, because the pore pressures are 0, the parameters which you are going to get from this test are going to be effective stress parameters. Under what circumstances you are going to do this test? Stability of the dam for after 100 years. Dams are normally constructed not for 20 years or 10 years or 5 years. You want to see whether it is going to be stable after 100 years. That means in 100 years I am sure the boundary conditions will develop because of the material which you are selecting that the drainage is going to take place completely. Correct? And consolidation is going to occur. So, ideal candidate test for to be performed on stability, long term stability of dams, earthen dams. Somebody had asked this question, we were talking about the heterogeneous and homogeneous dam cross sections and the seepage analysis. You know, how do you select the slopes of the downstream and upstream sides of the dam? Clear? Which one is going to be more critical? Look at this, the moment I have filled the water over here, you have already studied the seepage theory. Now, what I am doing, I am clubbing the effect of seepage on the stability of the dam, which is being governed by the shear strength parameters. So, this becomes a natural complicated problem. So, truly speaking, if I say that this is the critical section about which the failure of the downstream dam is going to take place, all the seepage force is going to act on this slip surface. Clear? And this process is going to be dependent upon the way the pore water pressure is developing and the way the pore water pressure is getting dissipated. So, when you are talking about the stability of the downstream side, which is very critical as compared to the upstream side, because upstream side what is happening? Water column gives a stability to the this side of the dam up, upstream. So, that means for analyzing the downstream slopes, we have to do this test, CD test. Is this part clear? Now, let us take the second case.
The second type of testing is CU test. Now, as the name suggests, the first one is consolidated and U corresponds to undrained, clear? So, you are doing a triaxial testing in a 50 50 margins. You are allowing the sample first to consolidate at a certain sigma c, but you are shearing it in a very, very fast rate of shearing, earthquake. There is no time for the material to understand how it has to behave, clear? So, the fast testing is allowed to study the response of the systems which are not going to consolidate during their lifetime. So, when the buildings are being constructed, you should go and see there is a natural formation and what do we do? We lay the foundation here first and then slowly and slowly the first floor, second floor, third floor keep coming over here, clear? So, normally the curing time is 27 days. Footings are very, very heavy in size and uh, dimensions and the weight. Because of the self weight of the footing, this soil is going to consolidate a bit. But after that what happens? The rate of construction is very rapid and you are not allowing soil mass to get consolidated, particularly when the boundary conditions are not very conducive. Both side clays, clear? So, if I want to simulate this type of situation, the best test would be CU test and then I can measure the pore pressure and I can make it CU prime, that is the beauty. So, in short, the first component remains same, UC is 0 under sigma 3. Now, one thing which I have not written over here and which I would like to correct is, uh, when you say shearing, what we have to do is, if this is sigma 3, I have to apply sigma f and this sigma f is also sometimes depicted as sigma d which is equal to sigma 1 minus sigma 3. So, this is shearing process. That means, after consolidating it, I am shearing it by applying a deviator stress. So, this sigma d is known as a deviator stress. clear and deviation is from sigma 3. So, that means the axial stress you are applying in such a manner that the deviation between <coughs> the sigma 1 minus sigma 3 becomes sigma d. That is what I wanted to explain. You cannot apply sigma 1 here. Exactly. So, the best thing is that truly speaking this is the sigma d which is getting transmitted from this which is equal to sigma 1 minus sigma 3. So, now you can compute sigma 1 from here which will be equal to sigma d plus sigma 3, clear? This is how we read this. What in short this indicates is, having done the consolidation test, if I shear it, sigma d is increasing and the failure occurs. So, this becomes your sigma f, clear? So, once you have done the consolidation, this part remains same, correct. So, that means the sigma d corresponding to sigma f at which the failure is taking place will be the deviation with respect to sigma 3 of sigma d, which is sigma 1 minus sigma 3. So, what you have to do is, starting from sigma 3, you have to apply this deviator stress to compute sigma 1, fine. So, this component remains same. A UC test can, CU test can also be done to obtain the CV value. The second part is different. From this point onwards, we shear it in a fast manner and fastness is in the form of uh, undrained test. The rate of strain is so high that it does not get time to get, you know, drained. So, this becomes a undrained test. The strain is going to cause the failure. You remember this, uh, what is the significance of this? At this point, zero strain, axial strain, zero shear stress. 
as you move along this axis what happens the shear stress picks up clear and then ultimately what happens the more and more axial strain the more and more shear strength is getting mobilized and then the failure comes at this point that is the answer to your question. So, at this stage if I say that this is sigma d which is sigma 1 minus sigma 3 and sigma 3 what will happen to the power pressures because this undrained test u d will not be equal to 0 there will be some value. Now, what should I do with this? This is where we define a parameter A. So, the A parameter becomes a pore water pressure parameter. So, the first time I am introducing a term A parameter which is a sort of a efficiency parameter. What is efficiency and of what? The efficiency is how much cause and effect has been created. So, what is the cause? Shearing, clear and what is the effect? The power of pressure. So, that means how much power of pressure gets developed for a given sigma 3? These are all efficiency parameters. Where I am going to use this term A parameter? You see ultimately all classification system I have forgotten now. I do not need any of those fine grain, coarse grain, organic material, non-organic material, specific gravity, density, nothing I need. What I need is how the system is corresponding or is responding, if I change sigma 3, how much power to pressure will develop and this becomes an efficiency parameter, clear and this is nothing but A. So, I can write now the pore water pressure is equal to A into sigma 3. Once you have got the pore water pressure, your effective stresses can be obtained. So, that means your sigma 3 will be equal to sigma 3 minus UD. And normally we write this as failure because A is at failure. The pore water pressure is going to be a function of sigma 3 unless you achieve the failure, clear. And then sigma 1 prime will be equal to sigma 1 minus UD at failure. Effective stress envelope also from here also. The parameters which you are going to get from here, like here we had C, C prime, phi, phi prime and they were same because the power pressures were 0. In this case, what we are going to get is, we are going to get C, C u and phi, C u. This is a special category of the parameters which we use. C consolidated and drain, phi consolidated and drain. And I think you can understand because this was a 100 percent torture to the sample, this is 50 percent. Third we have to create is a situation where it is 0 percent torture. So, that becomes your UU test. I will talk about this slightly later, let me complete this story first. Is this part okay? Traction testing is more of a philosophy rather than numerical modeling of something. Engineering when you do with the materials is more of a philosophy, it is the mathematics is only a tool which we utilize to represent parameters, fine. What all can be done with CU test? It is a very interesting test. So, I hope you can understand if I am doing a CU test, what is going to happen to this shear envelope? All these more circles are going to shift on the left hand side. So, that means the first circle will shift on the left hand side and this is UD. Okay. 
So once all the circles shift on the left hand side because of the pore water pressure, that is one of the situations. There are possibilities that UD might be negative and the entire set of Mohr circles will shift on the right hand side. So we will talk about that. Anyway, so under general circumstances, if you have a situation like this, what is going to happen? Your envelope is going to get shifted and this becomes your effective stress envelope. So by conducting a test, we have got different types of parameters, depends upon me, clear? So when you do your blood test, you know there are several parameters which are listed on the blood test report, which you cannot make out. You go to a doctor, he sees everything and says everything is alright, you start taking this dose and this dose and do not eat this and do not drink this, finished. Why? Because he must have seen some parameters and based on this he is recommending a future course of remediation, clear? or treatment. Is this part clear then? Now let me introduce here a concept of pre-consolidation pressure. 